What you paint is not nearly as important as why you paint, and that's what this video is about, and also about our mental health. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. Today I have a story to share with you, and there is a point to it. So if you watch this, it will be amazing to me. Uh, the book that got me interested in art is The Little Golden Book, called The Color Kittens. And I think it's showing up backwards where you are, but I think you can appreciate the art that would have been done in the early 60s. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm gonna do a synopsis. Uh, once there were two color kittens with green eyes, brush and hush. They liked to mix colors by splashing one color into another. They had buckets and buckets. And buckets and buckets of color to splash around with out of these colors they would make all the colors in the world. The buckets had the colors written on them but of course the kittens couldn't read. They had to tell by the colors. It's very easy said Brush. Red is red, blue is blue said Hush. But they had no green. No green? So what were they gonna do? Brush mixed red paint and white paint together. Did he get green? No, he got pink. Pink as a rose or a baby's nose. Then they tried to mix yellow and red together, and they made orange. Look at the gra graphic there, it's fantastic. Then they mixed red and blue together, and did they, what did that make? It didn't make green, it made dark purple. Purple as violets, purple as prunes, and purple as the shadows of a late afternoon. See, it's, it gets deep. Oh, wonderful, wonderful kittens, brush and hush. And almost by accident, the kittens mixed blue and yellow paint together and they made green. Green is grass, green is the islands of the sea. And the kittens were very happy because they made green. Then the kittens got so excited that they knocked their buckets upside down and all the colors ran together. Red and yellow and a little blue and a little black and that made brown. That's how you make your neutrals, right? Mix your primary colors together, you will get neutrals. You know, bl uh, brown is the night, dark is the night, etc. And they made a very colorful world. Chapter three. Um, the kittens went to sleep dreaming of their brown, the brown things, and suddenly Brush woke up and Hush woke up. It was morning. They crawled out of the bed into the bright world. The sky was wild with sunshine. The kittens were wild with purring and pouncing. Pounce, pounce, pounce. And they got so pouncy that they knocked over the buckets and all the colors ran out together. There were all the colors in the world and the color kittens had made them. Now, when I read this book as about a four-year-old or five-year-old, I thought, that's what I wanna be. I wanna be an artist. And reading it now, I'm going to be turning 68 in like three days. It has even more meaning to me. It's really just as simple as that. And now I want to talk a little bit about artists and mental health. Let's get started. All right, of course, I'm not an expert in mental health, but I think we all struggle from time to time with how we feel about our art and ourselves. This particular book, Effortless Mastery by Kenny Werner, was suggested to me by my brother, who is a fantastic pianist. He is uh, an amateur, but he's really a professional. So this painting is, uh, this book is written for musicians, but it applies to the arts in general and about getting out of your own way and finding the joy in what you do. Now, this came up this week because uh, Randall Sexton, who I do not know personally, but of course I know his work and know many of the artists that he has worked with and done workshops with. He has been nationally known and internationally known in the States or uh, you know, around the States for a very, very long time. And this particular week, uh, his wife let everybody know that he had taken his own life. She wanted people to know that he had been struggling with depression uh, because, you know, there's no shame in it. And to, to um, for all of us to remember to be you know, kind to each other and remember that each one of us has a story. It's, you know, we put, paintings are only part of our story. And the artist's life in particular has a lot of challenges. Let's take a look at some of Randy's work. 
Now, I used to th magically think, I called it magical thinking, I thought, wow, if I could paint really well, I'd never have a problem again in the world. And then I found out that that's not necessarily true. That you're just as human as anybody else, no matter what your particular skill set is. Your skills get, can make you feel better for a little while, but, you know, of course, it doesn't, if you paint well, it's not going to solve your uh, problems with relationships or or other things. The other thing that happens, of course, with artists is that you're working alone a lot of the time, alone and isolated for long periods of time. It's also, unfortunately, and we've talked about this in the past, there's a pretty competitive industry. And so, um, you know, no one's going to paint those paintings for you. You got to paint them and then you got to market them. And that's a whole different set of skills. Now, by anyone's measure, Randy was an incredible success when it came to the arts, and I don't know what his issues were. And, you, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure that depression is issue-related as much as it is chemical. You know, chemicals in your brain just not firing the way they need to and giving you that, that sense of well-being. But, again, an artist's life is, is fraught with uh, self-doubt. Also, one of the things that can happen is, you know, are you born at the right, wrong time? I think everyone would argue that Vincent van Gogh was born in the wrong time. <laughs> Nobody understood what he was doing. Uh, this is Marth Roth Rothko. So now we're talking just very briefly about painters from like, like the uh, 60s, early 70s kind of stuff. And this was what was very in fashion at the time. This was what was selling. I mean, selling and, and getting a whole lot of attention. And that's fine. I think, uh, you know, abstract expressionism, fantastic stuff, right? Well, it is fantastic stuff, unless you're a person who has dedicated their life to not producing abstract expressionism, but you happen to be born in the time where that's celebrated. And that happened to somebody that I do not know personally, but uh, Janet Fish. Now, Janet Fish is an oil painter, but I'm highly influenced by her, and many watercolor painters are. Back when Rothko and Warhol were doing what they were doing, she was doing this. She was taking produce and other household objects and looking at how the light played around them. And nobody was doing this at the time. She was not successful in terms of sales or you know, publicity or getting any kind of attention. But that didn't stop her. She kept painting. And in the end, just like Brush and Hush in the book about color, in the end, you have to satisfy and entertain yourself. You can't be doing it for, uh, for other factors, recognizing, of course, that uh, we need to make a living. Um, so that's Janet's earlier work. Here's the later work. Uh, very complex. And, um, and now, just to give you an idea, of the size of the work that she does. She also does these works on a very, very large scale. And they're incredibly impactful. And of course now, at least for the last 20, 25 years, she's been celebrated and, um, and is known in the art world, of course. How, how could you not be? But it must have been a struggle for her during that time when this type of art was not in fashion in any way. But she stuck to her guns, you know. She said, no, I'm going to paint what, you know, my soul or what I feel I need to paint. So there's some other examples of her work. It's just, oh boy, just incredible. Um, you know, even if you could afford a piece of Janet's work, I'm not sure it would fit in any of our, our homes. You know, these things are really enormous. I know I don't have any walls that are big enough for that. But anyway, um, so the point of this video is to play and find joy, like the color kittens did. And that's what I'm trying to do with my artwork at this point. If I'm not entertaining myself, then I'm really not interested in what I'm doing. And that's not coming from a self-centered place. It's coming from a place of wanting to enjoy these years of my life and not producing artwork for any other reason than for the joy of making it. And in the end, I think my paintings are getting better because I've let go of wondering what others will think of it. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.